Alright folks, so a uh, new project, it's gonna be a small one because in one video, but it's actually, uh, if you remember when I did all these uh, cabs, poker cabs, uh, they came out with all these buttons and uh, all sort of stuff and uh, I kept them because I thought, you know, maybe somebody will want them or maybe I'll be able to, able to do something with them and uh, apart from throwing them and uh, recently I was uh, just making some adapters, JAMA adapters for some, some of my uh, boards and for the Etsy shop and I thought I wanted to test the second player and I realized I didn't have a two player setup. So what I'm gonna do here is I, I'm actually gonna make a small, uh, well two player kind of platform uh, with a JAMA adapter or maybe have its own power supply or just feed off uh, another power supply and that kind of stuff. So but I'm gonna start with the controller and um, getting a, a layout on for the buttons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so um, I have buttons here. Uh, I'm going to need essentially I'm going to need three buttons because that's the standard JAMA setup and I don't plan on having a kick harness. I, I need two of these joysticks. I think I have another one of those uh, red ones. Uh, I'll need a play one, a coin one, probably I'll put it here probably, a coin one, coin two, a play one player to start and then here I'll probably put my test switches test service and there's another one I can't remember um, that kind of stuff and see uh, I have no plans for it I'm just gonna make it as I go I have some uh, I have some uh, wood uh, some uh, <laughs> wood uh, veneer um, that I might use for that and make it all wood veneer retro style um, LGR would probably approve and then uh, well, we'll see where we go with that uh, ideally I'd like it to uh, be its own sort of jammer gun thing so probably need to fit a power supply in there and then uh, maybe a speaker if I can and something to um, output it to SCART but that's way down the line um, for now I'm just gonna make this box and then we, we can add to it um, yeah let's uh, let's get started but well, this is a rough placement for plans so I have a uh, I, I do account for like that two uh, centimeters uh, of uh, just a gap because this is going to be a box so I've roughly placed one of them well I try to measure everything and and uh, and and have it somewhat symmetrical or at least you know the same either way so I have my three buttons here uh, I'll have my controller here um, this is the halfway mark I'm gonna have to cut this actually um, and then I have three buttons here and I'll have three uh, extra buttons here as well for service switch. It's not to be, you know, a, a competition or a playable thing. It's really as a as a just useful uh, uh, joystick tester thing for all my JAMA setup. So uh, that's that's the goal. And maybe down the line I'll turn it into a a, a more complete super gun. But for now this is what it's going to be. So I'm just going to drill holes here, 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 here. And I'll have the credits. Uh, I'll use the square buttons here uh, on the uh, on the side of the box, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So let's uh, start drilling. Right. So I got all my uh, holes drilled, and uh, I flipped the uh, board over, and uh, I have my uh, all my sides cut um, again from scrap wood uh, from the uh, pinball build. So I'm just gonna glue these in place. I uh, got some Gorilla glue, a few clamps. Leave that on overnight. And then we'll be able to just clean that, maybe um, give it a primer and uh, put a small uh, small coat, well a small coat, uh, uh, our layer of uh, wood veneer. So let's, uh, let's get gluing. Being glued and clamped. A rule of thumb when you're clamping stuff, you clamp the living <coughs> out of it. Alright, so I got my box uh, all glued and clamped in place. I started applying some uh, of that wood veneer, I've actually got two and I thought I'd use them. Why not? I got some uh, selection of buttons here that will go uh, everywhere. Um, I will have my two buttons here. I've actually left a hole here because I'm going to have a speaker. I have this TV speaker and uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'll connect it, but um, I'm going to put it here for now and then we can worry about that afterwards. Uh, I have a small hole here somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's here. It's under the wood veneer. I have to cut it, but just to uh, get wires to uh, to go through. And uh, so, a couple of things here. It's just to finish the edges uh, here. So, uh, for, for for this section here, you can see I've uh, cut a slot, and I'm just going to put some uh, T molding just all around this box. And then, just to protect these edges, uh, I'm going to put this. Uh, 
kind of meshing wire thing. I've actually cut that from another piece that I had. Can't remember where I salvaged, salvaged this from, but uh, it's handy to have. So I'm just gonna start assembling uh, stuff right now. Uh, maybe even put my wood veneer first, and then see how much of that I need per corner. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I've moved uh, workshops. I'm actually now in my room because well, we're pretty much done with the uh, sort of uh, aesthetics here. I've actually put uh, protectors here on the bottom and I've put those little uh, thingies here. I've done the same on the uh, the back. The, the purpose of those uh, protectors is actually just to protect, um, to elevate it so whenever I flip it or move it, this uh, um, veneer doesn't doesn't peel off. I have uh, one here as well. You can see I've put the speaker and I've speaker grill. Uh, I'm gonna have to paint this uh, black although it's on the other side. It probably doesn't matter really if I'm, if I'm really honest. Um, and uh, what I will have to do though is paint these uh, black because they're gonna stand out. Although it's kind of cool. Uh, you could argue that it's okay like that but uh, I, I just I love the uh, sort of a uh, shininess here um, so we're gonna start populating the inside uh, we're gonna need some uh, attachment for these I saved them as well I'm gonna go get them and you want two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen uh, just as many bulbs and uh, 13 leaf switches uh, sorry um micro switches for here and for each here actually they're here already I don't need them so 13 micro switches uh, 13 bulbs and attachments and then we can start wiring I'm actually gonna just solder stuff directly onto this because first I don't have enough crimps um, but also I'm not planning to change the setup or move it anywhere or anything so I'm just gonna use it um, soldered on make better contacts as well and uh, that way I can just run a a small it'll be easier to run a common ground between uh, all of these so let's uh, let's get soldering and get wires out a good stock of uh, leaf switches and uh, I have uh, some leftover bulbs these were actually from the pinball the, my first pinball so I'll see if I can reuse those uh, first before I just turn to uh, LEDs and uh, this is the uh, this is what actually goes into uh, the button and here this attaches on this it clips on it uh, but uh, um, on top of that you can put your bulb so in your bulb and it goes into the button that's what lights it so we'll need five volts in there but another thing I found as well is uh, this cool one is a 10k part and uh, uh, this knob so I'm actually gonna use this and uh, probably put it here really cool looking knob and uh, use it on the speaker just to, uh, just to dim the uh, the speaker and uh, so that's gonna be handy and also I forgot it but I kept this this is the wiring harness for the, the, the one of the poker cabs uh, on the control panel and I've actually kept it intact and I think I'm gonna reuse this because look here we have uh, all our ground already daisy chained onto um, a connector uh, a crimp connector and uh, we've got other stuff I can use stuff like that for the 5 volt uh, on a lot of the uh, bulbs so I'm gonna see how much of it I can reuse and then uh, and then I'll see and I might just keep this as well um, it's gonna be handy as a connector for 5 uh, five volt and ground um, so I'll see how much of it I can reuse instead of just spending time soldering I have this already I might as well reuse it that's the whole point of this build is just to use stuff that I had just lying around and I wasn't using just leftover and scrap bits and all this kind of stuff so um, I might leave the camera rolling for a while and uh, just get cracking oh yeah and another thing I'm gonna use is this my own uh, edge connector and uh, one of these here um, well this is the way those connectors work anyway you just solder one uh, one uh, female edge connector here and then you can insert that as an adapter between your JAMA connector and your board but I'm gonna use the same format and just bring all the connector wires here so that way I can put that in, into my JAMA stun and JAMA harness and this into whatever board or the connector and just literally tap the controls off that so they'll work in parallel um, so that's gonna be sitting between my my JAMA connector and between the board or board and adapter so it's gonna look a bit funny if there's an adapter like on the Kung Fu Master and uh, a lot of the other boards I work on but at least it'll allow me just to tap this guy 
you know, if I need to tap it in and test all the controls on the two players. Uh, or even have a quick go of to play a game with a friend of mine. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get working. Okay, so uh, wiring is happening. Man, this is a, a bit of a mess, but uh, I'm kind of grouping stuff together here, um, all the buttons, uh, areas, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I've uh, powered the, um, the lights in this, and this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just uh, creating this, let's see if I can take it off with one hand, this uh, little JAMA uh, pass-through connector, um, and uh, just tapping off what I need of that. Uh, but I need to actually make it a pass-through, so just connecting uh, every line from here to here and then tapping off that so that it feeds the right stuff into, uh, into a standard jammer. But I won't power it through the, uh, the, uh, the, the board here because, well, there's nothing connected really, no buttons. But what we have connected is power. And there you go. Uh, funny, actually, they're showing of uh, different colors, so... Uh, this sh is orangey, sort of, Let me just there you go. So this should uh, normally be yellow, but it shows up as uh, just super white. Anyway, uh, we've red, green, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and what I've also done is I've added a, a small volume pot here because I'm, uh, I'm using it. Um, I'm not putting a, an amp in there. There's no need for one. Um, th that's not the goal. I just want to... Uh, you have a small speaker to test that there's some sound coming out of here and just a volume pot in case it's coming out too strong um, which I doubt it will but um, it probably be, need to be halfway but I had these buttons that just look really cool and just on point here so um, let's keep uh, let's keep wiring can't wait for this to be finished oh, also I, I had this uh, little cache thing but I this little thing here which is just too small essentially so I put the big one here because I don't have a, a clear plastic Put the big one here just to hide the uh, the hole, and I'm just using the small one here. Uh, it'll do for now. Um, so let's keep working. Here you go, folks. My uh, my control test rig thing. I don't know. Does it have a name? If you want to give it a name. Uh, what I've done, I've added a, a volume pot here. It kind of looks cool, doesn't it? It's a little volume pot. Uh, so I have my controller one, my uh, three buttons for controller one, uh, controller two and three buttons for controller two, and then I have the uh, the coin one, coin two, uh, play one, start, player two, start, and then uh, I have uh, all the test, service, and tilt switch. Um, most of them aren't implemented on a lot of arcade boards, but it's handy to have. And uh, if I test on this, oh yeah, and it's connecting through this sort of pass-through, so just a JAMA, um, a JAMA fingerboard uh, passing through uh, the between the uh, the JAMA uh, rig here and into the uh, the board and through the adapter. There's a lot of stuff plugging into stuff, but uh, this is handy, so I can use that on any pretty much pretty much any setup really. And uh, well, let's uh, have a quick look. If I use a uh, controller one and button ones, you can see on this uh, Kung Fu Master test that uh, they are working. And uh, actually, button three isn't connected uh, on Kung Fu Master. And uh, player one starts two, uh, all the kind stuff, and uh, player two. And there you go. So it's working, uh, and it's going to be very useful. It means also I can do away with all these. Uh, just little connectors that just uh, quite weren't doing the job good enough for me. Um, glad I finally took the time to do this. Uh, the best part of it is it didn't cost me a penny. I used recycled parts, leftover scrap bits. Uh, this team holding was from the Pac-Man cab. I just had a, a meter left. Don't know where I found this volume knob here. Uh, all the buttons from a poker cab. Uh, I had these, I think I salvaged them from a, an old JAMA cab. And uh, all these were actually taken from uh, these protectors taken from uh, just a 
a piece of metal I, I salvaged because I thought I could do something with it at some point. And all the uh, all the wood veneer were from various projects. I think this was the Donkey Kong cab. I think this was the uh, Pac-Man cabaret cab. So all in all, it didn't cost me a penny. Great, uh, folks. I hope this was interesting. Uh, as usual, you can find me on Discord, uh, Facebook, Twitter, or you, that's not in any particular order. Um, yeah, if you want to help the channel, of course, there's Patreon, there's an Etsy shop as well. And uh, I hope this was interesting. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.